Hello everyone and welcome to Volleyball Essentials 5-1 Rotation. I have six players on the court. I have a seventh player which is the libero right here. If you do not have the time or the interest in watching the other segment in which I will talk about the libero, then pretend that this libero player right here is replacing the middle blocker right here, which is what the libero usually does. A defensive specialist that typically replaces the middle blocker when the middle blocker is in the back row. However, for the sake of this video, I will not be using the libero. I am going to stick to the traditional, ordinary use of the six players. In volleyball, there are three rotation formats that are generally used. The 5-1 rotation, five hitters, one setter. The 6-2 rotation, six hitters, two setters. You can look up other YouTube videos, but briefly, in a 6-2 rotation format, the opposite plays the second setter. So you have setter number one, setter number two. However, in a 6-2 rotation, when the setter is in the front row, he or she automatically becomes a hitter, which means the setter will always be coming from the back row. Personally, that's my favorite format because it allows the setter to have three hitters at all times in the front row during the game. However, the most commonly used rotation is the 5-1 rotation. Third, you have the 4-2 rotation, four hitters and two setters. With that one, you have ample room to configure your players or stack your players in a huge number of ways. Keep in mind also, even though the setter can set the ball to any of the five players, if the setter sets the ball to a player in the back row and that player is going to jump and attack or spike that ball, that player cannot attack a ball in the attack zone, which is defined as the area between the 10-foot line and the center line, or the net. This area, the attack zone, is exclusively meant for front row players when it comes to spiking and blocking the ball. Every sport has a general set of rules that must be followed. However, coaches and team players typically tweak those rules, bend those rules, still sticking to the parameter of such rules in order to maximize their strength, their ability, their strategy, and with the ultimate goal of winning the game. Volleyball is no different. The main parameters that must be followed in volleyball have to do with positions of the player right before the service is initiated. So, in this case, for example, in the starting lineup, by the way, I'm going to spend a bit more time in the starting lineup to explain some basic rules, and as we go through the rotations, hopefully it'll get easier and faster. The setter has to be behind outside hitter number one, the front row outside hitter, and also to the left of the sideline. Middle blocker in the back row has to be behind middle blocker number one and in between outside hitter number two in the back row and the setter. Outside hitter number two has to be behind the opposite hitter and to the right of the sideline. However, if following such parameter, we were to leave these players neatly stacked in two perfectly formed rows as they are right now, it will not be the most efficient use of the players, especially the players in the front row. Why? Because when this team is engaged in what's called serve-receive, there are two facets to a volleyball. Serve-receive is when the opposite team is serving and this team is receiving. Serve or service is the term used when this team is the one serving to the opposite team. In serve-receive, typically the ball usually comes right here on the 10-foot line or behind it. Hence why we have to do what's called stacking the players. And let's go ahead and stack the players right now. We're going to put the outside hitter right here, right around the 10-foot line. Setter is going to move just behind the outside hitter. There's a gap that naturally needs to be filled which means the back row players have to fill this gap. Middle blocker will go here, outside hitter number two will come here, and you can have it either way. You could, most of the times I see the middle blocker comes to the 10-foot line right here, 
and covers the short serves. And then the opposite hitter just makes sure to stay right to the left of the middle blocker so that they do not violate the rotation rules. Or you can usually have the middle blocker up here and the opposite come down here. But I will go ahead and use the middle blocker here and then the opposite will be here. Now with the 5-1 rotation rules, keep in mind that different coaches, different players have different preferences when it comes to using a different configuration of their players still following the 5-1 rotation rules. But I'm going to stick to the letter C as in cat for this nicely formed C shape right here. Now notice, all these players are not out of rotation. They are following the rules. The setter is still behind outside hitter number one. Middle blocker here is behind middle blocker number two because this middle blocker is slightly in front of her and is just around this area right here. And middle blocker number one, most importantly, is in between the opposite hitter and the outside hitter. Feet usually tend to overlap in these rotations. So for example, the outside hitter number one in the setter can overlap feet. As long as the setter's right foot is behind this player and inside this line, perfectly fine. Likewise, conversely, this middle blocker right here will usually overlap the foot with the opposite hitter right here. As long as his right foot is in front of the opposite hitter and also as long as this middle blocker is in front of middle blocker number two in the back row perfectly fine none of these players are out of rotation so let's go into the serve receive this player right here on the opposite team is going to throw the ball up in the air smack it and serve it across when this player makes contact with the ball the setter is going to move immediately so the setter moves immediately to the setter zone right here, which is two and a half. It's called two and a half because it's in, in between positions numbers two and three, hence two and a half. The ball has just been served. The outside hitter gets in position to hit the ball if it is set to her. Middle blocker moves here and gets in position to hit the ball if it is set to her and the opposite hitter gets in position to hit that ball if it is set to him. Ball comes across the court. Let's suppose right here that the outside hitter in the back row bump receives that ball. So hit number one, boop! Setter sets that ball, hit number two, boop! Sets it to the opposite hitter and the opposite hitter jumps and smacks that ball across. So boop! Shoo, hit number three. You may be wondering, Colbert, why is it that in the previous segment you stated that the opposite hitter goes to the right and the outside hitter goes to the left, to the left? Why is it that in this case they are in completely opposite sides? Because they have not yet engaged in defense, which is going to happen right now. As soon as those three hits have taken place, one, two, three, Opposite hitter smacks it, attacks it, spikes that ball across the net. And this ball is alive on the other team, meaning that they have bump received it and they're getting ready to set and spike that ball. That means that all the players, for that matter, move to their respective defense positions immediately. Now is the time where the opposite goes to the right. Outside hitter, to the left. Setter, to the setter's defense area not the setter setter area where they set the setter's defense area they're in the back row Shoo. middle blocker Shoo. to the front middle blocker in the front row outside hitter in the back Shoo. middle blocker number two Shoo. and these three players right here will take care of the blocks typically the ball is going to be attacked from three sides Either their outside, not our outside, their outside, the left side. Remember, the left side is usually the primary attacking spiking area. So it's going to be hit from that side right here, in which case middle blocker shifts to the right, helps block with the opposite hitter. That's why the opposite hitter also has to be a really good blocker, typically speaking. The, the ball can be hit from the middle front right here, 
middle blocker, opposite, and outside hitter, all three, like Diana Ross and the Supremes in a trio, baby, baby, will block this ball from the middle. The ball can also be attacked from their right side, which is our left side, which means outside hitter, middle blocker, will go and attack that ball. In professional volleyball at World Championships and the Olympics, I've also seen it where if all three players can get to it, then all three players block that ball as often as possible. But if this opposite hitter cannot get to it, he or she will usually send it on here in case the ball tips over and the outside hitter and middle blocker will block it if it is attacked from their right side. Now let's go to the second facet of this, which is our service. Take it Outside hitter is going to be facing to the left. Opposite hitter is going to be facing to the right. Their feet are going to overlap. As long as the opposite has her left foot to the left of the middle blocker, and as long as the outside hitter has her left foot right here to the right of the middle blocker, quote unquote, they're fine. The setter is going to move here, completely behind the end line. Our team has a service. This player throws the ball up in the air and hits that ball and serves it across. Immediately upon making contact with that ball, all players move to their defense position. Opposite, to the right. Outside, to the left. Middle blocker, in the middle. These are pretty much in position already. In the back row, setter shh, to the setter's defense zone right here because she is playing in the back row. Setter is in position number six. For this first rotation, I will physically move the players around so that you see how the rotation works. The players rotate clockwise to the left, even though the positions or the zones are layered in a counterclockwise fashion. That is just the nature of volleyball. Also, just to clarify, if I've ever referred to these two players as opposite players, I apologize. These are the outside hitters. OH, outside hitter number one. OH, outside hitter number two. So, the first rotation will be as follows. Vroom, 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 vroom. And now the setter is in position number six. We stack the players. This setter moves to the front, right behind the opposite. Gap is filled. Outside hitter moves slightly to the left. Middle blocker moves slightly to the right. Middle blocker in the front row comes back right around the 10 foot line to cover the short serves. So does the outside hitter on the front row to the left, moves slightly to the back. All the players are following the position. We have a nice C shape right here. This player hits the ball across. Immediately upon contact with that ball, then the setter pretty much moves over facing the team. What happens then is the ball comes over. Let's say, for example, middle blocker number two has the first contact. One, setter has the second contact, sets the ball. Two, and this player right here, the opposite would have moved back here to get ready to hit that ball as soon as that server served the ball over. And let's say, for example, the setter wants to set it to the outside hitter over here. Three, Outside hitter number two jumps, hits the ball, boom, spikes the ball, goes across. As soon as this team realizes that the ball is alive on the other side, then they move to their respective defense positions. Setter comes back here, boom, setter's defense area. Middle blocker moves to the front, middle block, shoom. Opposite, which is in the front row, moves to the right, shoom. The outside hitter, shoom, over here. This middle blocker then, boom, switches over 
Outside hitter, shoom, moves over. Outside hitters are on the left, middle blockers are in the middle, and the setter and the opposite are on the right, where they belong. Service. Outside hitter serves the ball, boom, it goes across to the other team, then opposite goes to the right, shoom, middle blocker, boom, comes to the middle. This player right here, the outside hitter that just served, is going to have the longest traveling distance. He's going to come all the way across. And basically how, how it's going to happen is setter, shoom, moves to the setter's defense zone. Middle blocker, boom, comes to the middle. Outside hitter, boom, comes all the way to the left. And now they're ready to play defense. <laughs> Setter is in position number five. And again, just to reiterate, the dashed lines, the numbers, and the initials are only used for visual reference purposes for these videos. When you go to the gym, obviously the court is actually going to look just like it looks on the other side with only the court lines. The 10 foot line, the center line, the side lines, and the end line. So now we're going to stack the players. So this middle blocker right here is going to move slightly to the left. This setter is going to come just behind the middle blocker and to the right, getting ready to make the move as soon as the serve receive is initiated. This gap needs to be filled. So the opposite outside hitter, excuse me, <laughs> moves slightly to the left. Middle blocker moves slightly to the left. And I'm going to move these players back just a bit. I know in the previous rotations and in the starting lineup, I had them all the way up here, but that would actually not happen in real life. They would have to move further back because otherwise the ball would just be hitting this area right here and they'll keep missing it. So I'm going to move them slightly back. Opposite hitter is going to come right here to the 10 foot line area. And then this outside hitter, number two in the front row, is going to move back to this other side of the 10 foot line area to cover the short serves. So now serve receive. This team serves the ball, boom. Immediately as soon as they see that this player has made contact with the ball and the ball is coming across, the setter runs all the way over here, faces the team players to the two and a half setter area. If this middle blocker has not received that ball, then the middle blocker boom, moves here to this position and then the opposite hitter and the outside hitter are ready to hit that ball. Let's pretend the ball came to middle blocker number one. So first contact, bump receive, boom. Second contact, the setter sets the ball, boom. And let's assume that she sets it to the outside hitter here. The outside hitter, boom, spikes it across the net. As soon as you know that the ball is alive, then you engage in your defense positions, which means setter, boom, moves to the setter defense area. Remember, setter still in the back row. And then the middle blocker moves to the front, opposite moves to the front here on the right, and then outside hitter moves to the front, and these players pretty much stay relatively in their area, and depending on which side of the court the ball is going to be hit from, they will shift accordingly to play defense. Service. Middle blocker then throws the ball up in the air, jump serves that ball, middle blocker number two in the front row, boom, moves to the middle, outside hitter, zoom, moves over to the left, and they can only start moving as soon as this player has hit that ball, has made contact with that ball to serve it over to the other team. If they move too early, they will be called out of rotation and that will be a violation point to the other team. Moving along, the setter, shoom, moves over to the setter's defense area. This outside hitter, boom, comes to the left. The middle blocker who just served, shoom, comes to the middle right here. And we are now getting ready to play defense. is in position number four. Now, notice that the setter has moved to the front row. 
It gets a bit trickier now because the setter only has two front row players that can serve as attackers, as hitters, even though the setter can technically set the ball to any of the five players, hence why we call it the 5-1 rotation. We're going to stack the players before the serve receive starts, so the setter pretty much is going to stay here, and then the outside hitter is going to move over here, you can do this a variety of ways, but the way I'm doing it right now, outside hitter number one in the back row, will cover the short serves right here by the 10-foot line. Middle blocker is going to move slightly to the left. Opposite is going to move slightly to the left. They're going to do the back defensive area right here. This outside hitter number two in the front row is going to move to the other side right here by the 10-foot line area and they're going to cover the short serves. This player is going to jump serve, throws the ball up in the air, boom, hits it. As soon as this player makes contact with the ball, then the middle blocker is going to drop back, center is going to run facing the players right here in the two and a half position. So let's pretend the ball came over, and middle blocker number one gets the first contact, bump receive, boom, number one. Setter sets, boom, number two, sets it to the middle, and then this middle blocker comes to the middle and attacks the ball. So again, one, two, three, shoo, spikes the ball across. Soon as you notice that the ball is alive, engage in defensive positions. The setter is going to go to the right. This outside hitter, shoo, right here to the left. This outside hitter in the back row, boom, to the back, middle blocker, boom, and middle blocker, boom. Now you have, and the opposite, of course, boom, right here on the right. Notice now, the setter, because she's in the front row right now, she is also going to be a blocker. Service, opposite, serves the ball, boom, setter, moves to the right, outside hitter, zoom, to the left, and now, middle blocker, boom. These three players are going to get ready to block that ball, and the opposite, boom, immediately moves right here to the right for the defensive play. Setter is in position number three. This particular rotation can be done in so many different ways when the setter is in position number three, dead center front right here. A lot of coaches prefer to use a configuration where they make very little use of the opposite player in the serve receive and that's exactly what I'm going to do but again talk to your coach so for this particular stacking I will have middle blocker boom come here outside hitter boom slightly to the left this opposite is just going to be right behind this outside hitter number two here I'm calling the ball out of bounds if the ball is served out of bounds. Outside hitter number one in the front row comes back here. Middle blocker comes back here. And these two players are going to take care of the short serves. And also the reason why we pretty much take the opposite player outside of the serve receive is because you really want to stick only with four players forming, again, the C shape that I mentioned earlier to take care of the serve receive. Because if you have five players taking care of it, it can get a bit convoluted. So serve receive. This team serves the ball. Boom. Immediately upon contact with that ball, setter just faces her players right here in the two and a half position. Contact number one, two, and a quick set right here on the right hand side. Middle blocker moves forward and attacks that ball. Boom. Ball is alive on this side, immediately engage in defensive positions. Center then goes to the right, middle blocker, shoo, to the middle, outside hitter, boom, to the left right here, opposite hitter in the back row, shoo, to the left, middle blocker, shoo, to the middle, opposite, boom, to the right. And that's how they do it. Service, shoo, outside hitter number two. Boom, serves the ball over, setter, shoo, goes to the right, middle blocker, boom, comes to the middle, front, outside hitter is already where he needs to be, 
and these players right here, same thing that happened earlier. This player is going to travel the furthest. So, opposite hitter, boom, to the right, middle blocker, shoot, to the middle. And this outside hitter, who just served that ball, is going to come all the way across to this position right here. Setter is in position number two. This is the last rotation before we go back to where we started from. Again, this rotation can be done in a variety of ways, but I will do it in the way where we pretty much conserve the opposite hitter, meaning that we keep him out from the serve receive. These two players, the setter and the opposite, are usually the highest paid players because they're usually the ones that are the most in demand. So to stack the players for this position, what I will do is move the opposite slightly back. Outside hitter number two comes here to the back, middle blocker, boom, comes here. This outside hitter number one in the front row, I'm going to move him right here around the 10 foot line area. And this middle blocker, I'm going to move him around here, the 10 foot line area too. So these two players will actually take care of the short serves and these two will take care of the defense zone right here. And then this opposite hitter, again, who will serve as the person who will call the ball out if the ball is served out of bounds and will immediately then move to the right. Most importantly then, this outside hitter who started in position three has to be in between the setter and the middle blocker and also in front of the outside hitter in the back row. So far, so good as far as being behind or in front of the outside hitter in the back row. But be very careful so the setter has to be right here. As long as the outside hitter's left foot is in front, quote-unquote, of this setter right here, meaning to the left, they're perfectly fine. They're not out of rotation. So we are going to serve-receive. Team serves the ball. Boom! Immediately upon contact, the setter then basically shifts to the two and a half position. And now the setter has the outside hitter on this side to hit and this one to hit as well, soon as the ball is passed on to him. So let's pretend that it was a short serve. So, contact number one, boom! Setter has contact number two, boom! And the middle blocker then comes and spikes that ball. Immediately upon realizing that the ball is alive on this side, engage in defense. Setter pretty much stays where he or she started. Outside hitter is going to move to the left. Middle blocker, boom, to the middle. This player right here actually, as soon as that ball was served, the opposite would have already moved to the right. Again, we conserved this player. We kept her out of playing serve-receive. Middle blocker moves here, outside hitter boom here, and there you have it, folks. That's a serve received. Service, middle blocker, jump serves, poof, it goes across. Soon as it starts going across, this middle blocker boom moves here, outside hitter in the front row moves here. This opposite player boom moves to the right. This outside hitter in the back row moves to the left. And this player, the middle blocker, who just served that ball, moves to the middle. And there you have it, folks. That concludes this section on 5-1 rotation. Thank you very much for watching. Apologies if it's a bit lengthy, but I hope that you get some useful information out of it.